This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and who doesn't love affordable tablets with pens? This is the Cube Mix Plus. We've reviewed several Cube products. They're a Chinese brand that's available through Gearbust and other Chinese exporters who sell to the United States and other countries, many other countries around the world. So what's nice about this is it's affordable, it's relatively powerful, good looking, not so much. We'll talk about that, but that's not really what this product is about. And it's an optional keyboard dock, the ASUS Transformer style, also sold for. So this is like $340 for this. This is about another $52. And basically what you get here is the Surface Pro 2 display, complete with Wacom EMR digital pen support. And those of you who are into pens know that that's a pretty good pen experience. And inside you've got a Intel 7th generation KB Lake Core M3 CPU, which is currently the latest generation for the M series of CPUs. So it's a lot more powerful than most tablets on the market in the affordable range, which are still rocking something like Intel Atom or Celeron, you know, that things that really are slugs. This one can actually run Photoshop CC 2018, and I'll show you now. So the Cube Mix Plus is a 10.6 inch tablet that's not gonna win any beauty contests. Okay, we have big bezels here that are kind of retro, although I don't mind them because they give you a place to rest your hand without having to worry about palm rejection issues and all that sort of thing. And here's what the back looks like. You know, and I actually do use metal in the construction and it's not hideous, but it's not beautiful because really the point of this product is to bring you something with the most possible horsepower and the best possible digitizer for a low price. If you make it pretty, then you know it happens. There are ones that run on Intel Atom CPUs, they're underpowered, they don't have the best digitizers, but they look prettier. Or there's more expensive products altogether. Obviously, you can get a Microsoft Surface Pro 2017 edition or a Surface Pro 4 and still spend a lot more money than something like this. So for those of you who just want an affordable Windows 10 note-taking machine or a starter tablet for doing art or just something that's a portable sketchbook, then this can be pretty attractive. And if you get the optional keyboard, which is... You know, $52 is not that much money. You actually have, you remember like the netbooks of old, only this has more brains than a netbook, but it's magnetic, kind of the ASUS transformer kind of docking thing, mounts firmly and adds two USB ports and actually a surprisingly good keyboard on this. The travel on this and the tactile feel are excellent. It's not going to be backlit or anything fancy like that. There is no battery in the base, which is one of the reasons why the base is inexpensive, but this is a pretty decent experience and the trackpad is not bad on it as well. So for those of you who are not familiar with Cube, it, the company is actually Shenzhen Aldo Cube. They're a Chinese brand, and unlike some other companies, they really haven't technically, officially tried to branch out into other markets like the United States and stuff, but they're happy to have places like Gearbest to sell these to anybody, and it comes with a standard Windows 10 installation, multi-language install. So by default, actually, it started with English for me. So this isn't like the Xiaomi laptops, where it actually is thoroughly Chinese Windows 10, and you have to go through a whole lot of work with this, not at all. And it's a, a very vanilla installation of Windows 10. If you're paranoid about Chinese spying or something like that, you could always use a USB recovery stick and you know reinstall Windows, but I don't think there's a need to do that sort of thing. Horsepower in here is really pretty good for the money. It's an Intel KB Lake Core M3 7Y30 CPU. That's one gigahertz with turbo boost to 1.6 gigahertz. So you're looking at pretty much base level Surface Pro performance in a lot less money here. Obviously, you're not getting the beautiful design and a lot of the other creature comforts, the newer, more high resolution digitizer that you would on a Surface Pro, but this is like a third of the price too. So that is certainly fair. You have a couple of nice modern accoutrement here, like you have USB-C port. It's Gen 1 and it's on the side. All the ports are on one side. And this charges with your standard 12 volt, two and a half amp charger, a teeny little wall ward charger. So this is very portable. It's a very short cord. And therefore you're not using the single USB port to charge it, which is actually a good thing in my book because you're pretty port constrained with tablets. However, I have tested it with USB-C chargers and if you wish to charge it with USB-C, if you have a USB-C charger, you can do that. It has a USB 3.0 port on the tablet with a little dongle adapter that you use because it's that kind of micro style connector. It's typical for a lot of these tablets to come with that. But if you get this dock, then you get a USB port on each side, traditional side, which is certainly a selling point. Beyond that, you get a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. Another nice thing is a lot of these kind of budget tablets have eMMC storage along with their Intel Atom CPU as well. This actually has a M2 SSD inside. Those are considerably faster. eMMC storage is pretty much like an SD card in terms of speed, which is to say horrible. 
So you get a real M2 SSD. It's going to be a SATA 3 interface, certainly no PCIe fancy pants kind of thing going on here. But that means that the benchmarks that you can see on screen are actually typical like of any laptop that might cost more with the SATA 3 SSD inside. That said, in actual use, I notice when installing software, because obviously I have to put a lot of benchmark programs on here, Adobe Photoshop, big fat programs to put on there, it seems slower than average for a SATA 3 SSD, despite the benchmark saying it shouldn't be. One, so when you first set it up, you're going to want to slap it. It's going to seem a little slow when you're installing your programs. But then after that, program launch time, times are actually fine. Big project save times if you're doing video or something like that, and you could do 1080p video processing on something like this. It's going to take a little, little teeny bit longer because of that storage. As 4 gigs of RAM, it's soldered on board. That's all you get. So obviously, the, the specs here are sufficient for doing 2D work in Photoshop, including the latest Photoshop CC 2018 edition. You could do some 1080p video editing. It, you don't want to use this for doing 4K video editing or 3D rendering and that sort of thing. It doesn't have that much horsepower, that much RAM for starters, or most importantly. Interestingly enough, you could open this up. They, you know, they don't say, oh, look, go ahead, take it apart. But it's not like Surface products, which are so thoroughly glued together. This is really a snap-on case. And where the white edge meets the silver edge here, you can stick your fingernail in here and then use a plastic pry card or a guitar pick, and you can actually work the back off. So if you want to upgrade the SSD, you could. And it's a half-height M2 SSD. So it's not as tall. It's not the gumstick one. It's the one that's half of that height. Some people have commented about the heat. You will feel the heat if you're working it really hard, like playing games, right in this area here, because that's where the CPU is. Being a Core M, this is passively cooled, no fan. So it can get kind of hot here, and the CPU temperatures can hit 85, but only if you're doing something really crazy, like playing racing games on this or something like that. So I wouldn't worry about it, but some people have opened it up, and you could actually improve on the cooling a little bit just by putting some thermal tape over the large heat sink that sits over the CPU. When doing Photoshop and other things like that, streaming video, it never gets that hot, the CPU or the temperature on the back. So I think for most people, that's overkill. You wouldn't have to worry about it. So as Cube has done in the past with these two-in-one tablet designs, you've got the Surface Pro 2's display here. If you remember what that was like, 10.6-inch IPS Wacom EMR. It's the older generation Wacom EMR with 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity. There's no tilt support on it, but all the goodness of Wacom EMR is here. The really nice, buttery, smooth lines, the good tracking, the better-than-average palm rejection, plus some of the negatives, like Wacom EMR in that generation, until recently, in fact, had more parallax which is to say pen tip offset near the edges of the screen. I did the full Wacom calibration. You can see you got the Wacom software pre-installed on here. If you do the full multi-point calibration, it actually is pretty good for the, for the edges there. It's suitable enough for certainly note-taking and even some artwork, because typically you've got menus and the window trim around the edges anyway, so you're not drawing out to the very edges. The display itself is very bright. Again, this is Surface Pro 2 specs all over again. The color gamut, you'd be surprised too, if you think back. Surface Pro 2 didn't have the widest color gamut in its day, or nor does it now. But that said, the display looks pleasing enough to look at. The colors are nice. The contrast is pretty good on it, and it's very bright at 371 nits, which is nice for a small tablet because you might actually take it outdoors and you can see it. It's got a glossy display on it. Ours does not have a screen protector on it. I know some people have said they've had a matte pre-applied screen protector protector. Ours doesn't have that. So this is standard Wacom EMR. Any Wacom tablet PC pen will work. There's the Wacom bamboo pen that they make. There's, I'm using, you'll probably notice, a Toshiba tablet PC pen that was Wacom EMR. There's a lot of ones out there that are going to work for this. The, the Mars Stetler pen that's made for recent Samsung products is going to work on this as well. Just not in Tuos or Cintiq products. Because those are a different kind of Wacom EMR technology. One thing that goes along with the budget nature of this is the weight of it. It is not particularly light. The tablet itself is 1.5 pounds, which is about 720 grams, which isn't hideous but when you consider the fact it's only a 10.6 inch tablet. That's kind of heavy these days, right? And if you pair it up with the keyboard base, which has to weigh about the same so they're balanced and it won't wobble, then you're looking at about 3.01 pounds, which is about 1.4 kilograms. So it's got some weight to it, you know, and that, that's, that's one drawback with it. Other goodies are a 2 megapixel front camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera, which are both kind of mediocre. 
You have dual band Intel 3165 AC Wi-Fi in here and Bluetooth as well. And like I said, Windows 10 Home 64-bit installation here. So battery life on this, well, it has a 33 watt hour battery, which is 4,300 milliamps. And uh, that's an okay size battery actually, but battery life's about five and a half to six hours or so with brightness set to about 40%. It's a very bright screen. So that's still pretty darn bright and doing stuff like streaming movies, drawing in Photoshop, using it to do Word and Excel work, that kind of thing. Obviously, if you're pushing it with some kind of Windows App Store game or anything else like that, or doing a full HD video editing, you're probably going to get shorter runtime. So not stupendous, but passable. So that's the Cube Mix Plus. Again, it's really, for what you get, for the price, it's really a great little tablet. You know, it's good looking, no, not so much. That's not where they're, they're putting the value here. Mostly is in the internal components, the speed, the quality of the display, and those sorts of things. 10.6 inches is small. There's a reason why Microsoft moved the size range up for the Surface Pro line. Originally, it did start out at 10.6 inches, but there's still a place for this as, a handy dandy note taking tablet, for example, this is a manageable size. It really is easy to work with. And you've got pretty big bezels here. And the nice part is actually you've got a place to rest your hand in case the palm rejection goofs up, which it does on all tablets every once in a while. And even for art, I mean, I'm a landscape painter a lot of the time, so I like big screens. But for those of you who are doing comics, caricatures, character sketches, all that sort of thing, it's perfectly good. And even as a starter experience for landscape painting. So yeah, thumbs up. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.